Week 6, Problem 6. Calculate the power delivered to each resistor in the circuit shown in the figure below. R1, R2, and voltage. Okay. And then they ask us a bunch of questions. All right. So when I see a problem like this, um, generally what I do is I look at the questions, what they're asking me real quick, see if they're easily answerable, and if they're not, then I just solve the whole circuit. I solve for pretty much everything. Um, by everything, I mean voltage, resistance, and current. So looking at this guy, and then when I start writing things, I usually write it straight on the paper. So for example, here we know that, oh, don't want to make that shape. So let's see, R1 is 3 and R2 is 3. So oh, equals 3. And I'm just going to kind of know it's ohms. This guy, 3 ohms. That guy is already labeled as 1. And that guy is 4. And then I think, what, 20? 24. So this guy then would be 24 volts. And I think I'll move to a little bit darker color, a little bit more assertive. There we go. So now I want to convert, I want to, I'm going to redraw this to find the total current that's um, being given out by the battery. And once we know that, then we can pretty much solve everything. So I'm going to do this go like this. I'm going to draw a quick little battery. Draw. Up, up, up. Up, 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 up. There we go. And the idea here is I'm going to find equivalent, equivalent resistors and um, simplify this. So now we have a 3 ohm and a 1 ohm together in parallel. So the way you um, find the equivalent resistor here is this will be R2 and I'll call this guy I don't know 1 ohm so one when you have um, resistors in parallel you add the reciprocals now give you the reciprocal of what you want so it's almost easier just to kind of show you so 1 over 2 1 over 3 1 over 3 plus 1 over 1 equals, all right, and I'm going to cross this guy out, write that 3, cross this guy out, write that 3, get 4 thirds, therefore our equivalent equals 3 fourths. So I'm generally less formal about this than I am doing other parts because you have to do so many simplifications just of reducing a circuit that you don't have time to be excessively formal about everything. So all right, so now we got we have a new circuit right here, okay? Then I'm going to rewrite it, rewrite it again as a battery, and oh, sorry, one other thing I should mention: after you do a um, uh, equivalent resistor in parallel, you should check and make sure that the resistance is less than either resistor that you did. So we had one that was three, one that was one, and then three fourths is less than both of those. Good. That's what it should be. It is always easier for current to flow through <coughs> resistors in parallel than any specific resistor. So if you think about like as water going through a pipe, water can go through this guy. Yeah, pretty easy. But if it has another path, no matter how high this is, it'll always be easier. If you have a, um, a building with one door, it'll always, you'll always be able to get people out quicker if you have another door. Even if the other door is small, and you know, the first door was huge. The secondary door they have is still gonna, still gonna help. Uh, might not help a lot, but at least help a little bit. So that's kind of a dummy check to make sure. Because if we got like, I don't know, five ohms for the equivalent resistor, we know we messed up. So you look at that and make sure it's right. All right. And this battery here is still 24. All right. Now for series, you just add them together. So seven, three plus four is seven. Seven and three fourths. So I'm gonna write that as 7.75. We now have the equivalent resistance, equivalent resistor. We can find what would be the current. So current V equals I R, or the way I like to think of it in uh, hydraulics terms, would be the current is going to be the um, the pressure difference, the potential difference divided by the resistance to flow. So flow is going to be the potential of flow divided by the resistance to flow, which I think is actually called Darcy's law. It's the, it literally is the um, uh, 
the exact analogy to from uh, water to uh, electricity. So, nope, it should have had 7.75 on the bottom. There we go. So, 24 divided by 7.75, which will be about 3. Oh, darn you, dots. Uh, 24 divided by 7.75. There we go. And we got, oh. I think I'll call it 3.1. G equals 3.1. That'll be 3.1 amps. Assuming these are normal, is it? Yep, normal ohms. Okay. Everything's in no kilos. All right. So we have 3.1 amps flowing through all of these guys. All right. So let's see. They're asking for power delivered. Okay. So for power, Specifically for resistors, there's three ways to write the equation for power. Power equals I squared R. Power equals IV. And power equals V squared over R. Um, just remember one of these, and you can drive the other two using Ohm's law. Um, the easiest one for me to remember, to, for at least to start with, was V squared over R, because I remember that Electrical power is the same thing as centripetal acceleration. So you have velocity squared divided by radius. And when you look at it, it's the same formula, like V's over R's. Um, <clears throat> it was easy for me to remember that because it's such a terrible gross conceptual error. Like, if you actually taught people that, then they would be making all sorts of crazy mistakes and they would understand nothing in life. So I remember that electrical power is the same as centripetal acceleration, V squared over R. And then after you remember that, then you can derive the other two using Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. All right, so first one, we're going to do resistor R1. Ah, so we need to find out the current that goes to each of these guys. Okay, so the way I'm going to find it, because the current's going to split. Some of the current's going to go this way, and some of the current's going to go this way. So we need to find out what proportion of the current goes to each one. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to find the voltage drop across this section right here. So delta V, so V equals IR, so it's going to be, what is it, 3.1, 3.1 times equals IR, which equals 3.1 times 3, which equals 9.3. So the voltage drop is going to be 9.3, so we're going to have So we're going to start with 24 volts, and we're going to lose 9.3, which will give us 14.7. So the way I'm going to look at this is I'm going to do 24 volts. Then here it's going to be 14.7 volts. Okay? Then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. So, nope, back to pen. Delta V equals IR which equals um, 3.1, that was terrible, times 4, which will be 12.4 volts. All right, so before it was a voltage drop. This time, we're starting from zero, so it's going to be a voltage rise, because current is going this way. So if you're going, counting against the current, you'll be going upstream, I guess. And if you're going upstream, you're going uphill, so the voltage will also be going Hill. So it'll be 0 plus 12.4, where before it was minus. So now to find the voltage between these two, we're going to find the voltage difference. 14.7 minus 12.4. 14.7 minus 12.4. And that'll give us a voltage of 2.3. So delta V equals 2.3. So now we can find the current through either one of these. So I'm going to do current equals voltage divided by R. Now I know this is, um, you should probably do a little bit neater than this. Um, that way you can get partial credit if you need it. Uh, my general view on life is don't rely on partial credit. Rely on showing some work and getting the right answer. And 
it's a lot easier to ask for a regrade if you have the right answer and a bunch of work, even if it is confusing. So do what you can to get the problem correct first, and then be organized later. Um, these circuit analysis problems tend to be a little bit disorganized. So the voltage we have is 2.3. The reason I started with this guy is because I know that the um, resistance is 1. So the current will be 2.3 amps. Now I'm going to look at that real quick and see if that makes sense. So we started with, um, what is it, 3.1? 3.1 amps here. And 2.3 of it is going through this guy. So it seems reasonable that most of it will go through the smaller resistor and we won't have more going through this resistor than we did total to start with. So that seems reasonable. So if we have um, 2.3 amps going this direction, then this is a uh, Kirchhoff's current law, which is basically like, if you, using a hydraulic analogy, if you have a pipe here with water coming this way, then all the pipe water entering the pipe has to equal all the water exiting the pipe. It's so common sense that it's almost hard to describe. So it's basically saying that all the, if you have positive currents here, they will equal the p currents exiting here. So the way we're going to look at that is then we're going to do 3.1, which is the total current we have, minus 2.3, 7.8. So this will be 0 0.8 amps. So 0 0.8 plus 2.31 equals what we had to start with. All right, so now we have all the currents. We have all the resistors. So now we can find all the power. <laughs> First you get the resistance, then you get the currents, then you get the power. All right. It's probably <laughs> that's terrible. All right. Power equals I squared R. So I'm going to start with R1. And hopefully my work isn't so messy that I lose it all. So I squared R is going to be 3.1 squared times 3. 3.1 squared times 3. Got it. So 3.1 squared times 3. Now you can also use I times V or V squared over R. 28.83 um, I like to use I squared R because um, even though these are going to be pretty much equivalent for everything you're doing um, in this class these aren't actually all the same equations. They don't actually apply uh, equally. So like IV is what you use for um, like if you have a generator or a motor then you have you use current times voltage. If you have a resistor then you have I squared R. Um, they refer to like as I squared R losses like if you have like a toaster and it heats up and it creates all that heat due to the resistance of the material inside um, nichrome as I learned in a previous question um, not necessarily for toaster but just for heating elements um, then you have to use I squared R. Um, in this class, it won't matter because they're all equivalent, but there are cases when they are not equivalent. All right, so did I actually get an answer? I did. All right, so I wasn't being a complete schlub. All right, so now they go to the second easiest one because of the current. All right, 4. So it'll be I squared R, which will be 3.1 squared times 4, oh, which should be probably 3 fourths bigger than our previous answer. So 38.44, okay, 38.44, and you can see why I um, pretty much solved the entire uh, circuit before I really even start answering the questions, because if I went and tried to find each individual one, then I'd be keep going back between the questions and the problem, and I'd have to make a game plan before I start. Or if I just solve everything, I'm just walking into the woods, figure everything out, and then go back and then draw the map later. So R2, all right, so R2, we have uh, 0 0.8 uh, amps. So 0 0.8 squared times 3, is it 3 or is it 2? 3. So 0 0.8, 1.92. Okay, and then over here we have the one, so it'll be I squared, which would be two point three squared. Two point three squared.
squared times resistance, which is 1. 5.29. Up oh, there we go. Five point two nine. All right. So one thing that's interesting here, kind of in life, um, is you see that you basically have a high resistance path and a low resistance path. And the low resistance path is doing significantly more work than the high resistance path. You have five point two nine versus one point nine two. This is why short circuits catch on fire. Um, a short circuit is basically like literally a short it's like oh yeah this beautiful circuit and then hmm darn you pen work and bam straight wire straight across very low resistance and it's just basically like the the cheater path going through and the idea is that um the short path has very low resistance so it's going to create a whole bunch of um heat and then you know catch on fire and burn your house down so the idea here is when you have a low resistance path, it's going to create much more heat and catch on fire and burn everything. So that's why short circuits are less than preferable. All right. I think that's all we got for this guy. Eh, not too bad. And moving on. Number seven.